Good afternoon. It's Wednesday, one of my favorite times during the week. It's time to do Bible study. I always look forward to this. Look forward to the 98% of the people on here that don't know Jesus. The 2% that do, praise God, that follow me. Praise be to God. I am looking forward to be learning and more, learning a little bit about and doing things today. So we thank you. I'm going to pray for you first. Lord, I pray for each and every person coming on here today, Lord. Ask, Father, that you would just help them to rise up, Father. If they don't know you, I pray that you would stir in their spirit salvation, that they would come to know you as Lord and Savior. I pray for the Christians on here who need to hear this today, that they would proclaim boldness, that they would be bold in Jesus Christ, and that they would come to be mighty warriors in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this time. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come on here today and to be able to teach Bible study, to be able to learn more about you. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, the world is getting bolder out there. Um, there's a lot of crazy things going on. Uh, there was a museum. I actually did a post on this when I found out. I was a little bit taken aback when I heard this. There's a museum out there in Minnesota that's hosting a demon summoning seminar, not only for parents, but for children. Talk about scary. Kids and parents can learn how to summon a demon. That's how bold this world is getting. It's crazy. When I was in the New Age movement before I was saved, at least they had thought to mask it and say well, we're calling on a spirit, you know, like some kind of spirit animal or something like that. But they're flat out calling them demons now. You can summon a demon, they're saying. Praise, that's just crazy, crazy. Like schools, for example, instead of teaching reading and writing and arithmetic, they're teaching woke values, they're teaching gender identity, and trying to make it so our children can get surgeries without our parents' permission. The world is getting bold. Then I see people on there all the time commenting, commenting on my, on my TikTok here. They'll say, Hail Satan, and other types of junk. They might be joking, but this is not something to even take lightly. We don't do that. We shouldn't be doing that. But the world is getting bolder. And we need warriors. We need Christian warriors to rise up. We need Jesus-loving, Holy Spirit-filled, bold believers who will pray, who will surrender the fight to Jesus and cry out for the revival of lukewarm Christians and unsaved mockers. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Matthew chapter 7, verses four, 13 through 14. We're going to be in there today. And it says there in Matthew chapter 7, if you have your Bibles, verses 13 through 14, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life and only a few find it the word many there if you look it up in the greek the word many means majority and a majority if you were to take maybe 40 billion people let's just say is 20 billion people a majority no that's half is 30 billion people a majority? Well, you're getting there. You know, maybe 39, 38 billion would be considered a majority. That's pretty. A, that's a pretty scary scripture to be reading here. And the majority includes Satanists, atheists, Zen Buddhists, Hindus, Muslims. Then if you go down to the lower religions, you've got the vacuum cleaner cult, the vampires, the Wiccans, the hate groups like the Hidden Truth, they're all on that broad path. Many, the Bible says, the majority enter through it. Then they will lead their other people, they'll lead their families, they'll lead their children to that broad path of destruction. 
believers, Christians, warriors, we need to rise up. And today is a public declaration. The Lamb of God that took the sins of the world has died and he has rose again. Praise be to Jesus. And in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, it says there is one God and one mediator between God and man, and that and mankind, and that is the man Jesus Christ. Yes, they need to repent, Wayne. If they would repent, it would be awesome. Jesus is our mediator, but here's the thing. There are many of us praying for spiritual overthrow in 2024. Not a physical one. We are looking for a spiritual overthrow in this nation. There are a remnant of believers that are tired of the things of Satan ruling over our nation. We're sick of seeing it. We don't want to see it anymore. We call on the Lord, and I do this every week, to take back our nation. I love America. I love this place. I want, to, I want the Lord to occupy and to raise up leaders that will stop by breaking every commandment. The government will not change. You've got these people in government, these leaders, these people, and they're breaking the Ten Commandments. The government won't change, but the Lord can change the hearts of leaders in those positions. He can turn the hearts of the people that are leading us to Him. And even if you're not a Christian, and you know you think, oh, well, you know, wouldn't you want someone who follows the Ten Commandments? Because we live in a Ten Commandments world, whether you believe in God or not. Wouldn't you want a leader that doesn't steal money? Isn't corrupt? You know, what a wonderful thing. Then if they don't desire the change... What would be a great thing the Lord could do? He could allow them to be removed and place godly people in power, place moral people in power, holy fire from heaven to burn in the hearts of believers, holy fire to save those that need him. The people on here that don't know Jesus, may holy fire fall into your hearts. May you come to know Jesus, and I proclaim that in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I look forward to all the atheists and all the mockers who come on my live. And they come on here weekly and they say, I will never accept your sky daddy fairy tale. But God is bigger. God is bigger than their little minds. He can roar like a lion into the hearts of anyone. Some of our greatest warriors in the kingdom were former mockers and former atheists. Some of our boldest believers are former messy, messed up people that said, I will never believe. I will never go to a church. I will never become a Jesus follower. And the Lord said, oh yeah? Well, guess what? Boom. You're going to become a Jesus follower. You're going to become a Christian. I had somebody tell me that one time. I was talking to them, and I was praying for them, and they said, I will never, ever step through your church doors. That's what they said. I would never do that. Eventually, they came to me and said, I would love to come to your church, and I would love to learn more about Jesus. I don't know exactly what it's going to take to break some of you. I knew what it took to break, me, to break me when I was an atheist, what the Lord did for me to help me accept him as Lord and Savior. But I want, and I want you to get saved because I know there's some of you on here, you come on here all the time and you, you mock and you, you go on other people's channels. I see you on other Christians' channels. And I see your boldness for things that are dead. And I think, praise God, if you got saved, think about what you would do for the impact of the kingdom. Think about if God took you Saul's and made you Paul's, how amazing would that be? Praise be to God. Revelation chapter 5, verse 5, if you're turning in your Bibles, it says this, And one of the elders said to me, Weep no more. Behold, 
the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered, so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. True believers are tired of seeing Satan go around winning and trying to steal people and capture them away from the kingdom of God. We are ready. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5, we are ready, praying to break those strongholds. We are called to be as bold as lions, believers. That's what we are called to. This is a wake-up call for you today, believers. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1, it says, The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. We are called to be bold. We are called to pray for Holy Ghost fire. Believers, we need to cry out for God, to surrender our, to our Lord. That way, the cool part is when we cry out, it says in the Word. When we surrender to God and allow Him to fight the battles, it says we can reoccupy the land that was taken from us. We need to overthrow the junk and the garbage that holds us back from his presence. And the cool part about that is the enemy has a lot of resources. They have a lot of supplies. And then you think about when Moses went to Pharaoh, and then Pharaoh got destroyed. Egypt got destroyed. Egypt was the world power at the time. Egypt gets destroyed. And as the Israelites are leaving, the Egyptians are giving them gold, giving them silver, as they're leaving and they're heading into the wilderness, praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. We, as believers, need to shine again when others dim and hide their lights. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16, it says, You, Christian, you, believer, are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, which we can do sometimes, we can get a little lukewarm, how can it be made salty again? Holy fire, praise be to God. It's no longer good for anything when it's not salty, except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot, which we did a lot of that in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, when I lived there. Threw a lot of salt out, got a lot of that stuff under the snow. But next it says in verse 14, you singular emphatic, I'm going to talk about that in a minute, are the light of the world, believer. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. That wouldn't make sense. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine, believers. Let your light shine before others, that they may see the good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Because the Lord gives us those things, gives us kingdom cash and all those different things. And I'm not on here. I'm ever, you don't ever hear me begging for cash because I have Yahweh Jireh. He is my provider here on the mini ranch. He takes care of me, praise God. And the best part about kingdom cash is the reason why he gives it to us is because we can share it with other people, praise God. It's awesome. It says he takes care of all our needs according to his riches and glory. So last year when I had two tractors, I was like, okay, well, I have two tractors. What would most people do? Put an ad in Craigslist or wherever and try to sell it. No, I prayed, Lord, what do you want me to do with this second tractor? What do you want me to do? And I got to bless a family that didn't have one. Praise be to God. It's kingdom. It's all for the glory of God. And it's just stuff. There are more important things in this world. Matthew 16, 26 says, What would it gain the whole world, yet forfeit your soul? And the word world there isn't the word world. It's the word cosmos. That means the whole universe. So God cares more about you and your soul. He cares more about Dan Parker's soul and John Wright's soul and Think Critically's soul and Wayne Fullwood's soul and Skate Prey Mosh's soul. He thinks, I like that, Skate Prey Mosh, that's awesome. It, he, he cares more about your souls than anything else that he's created in this whole universe because you are beautifully and fearfully and wonderfully made, praise God. 
These traits need to be understood. And we need to pray that they are restored in those who are sitting in pews or in chairs in the church or even those Lone Ranger Christians that I meet that have gotten lukewarm sitting in their lazy boys at home. This says here in the verses, we are singular emphatic in the Greek. The light. We are singular emphatic. The salt. We are called to shine. I saw Jason came on here a little earlier. I watch your show every week. I'm going to be talking a little bit about you and some other TikTokers in a little bit. So, And about boldness, which is pretty cool because I think you're a bold brother. And I love that. If you're on here still, you're a bold brother, Jason. I love that. So then these atheists and mockers, they're so determined to drag people down dark paths to destruction that they take their precious short time in life, which life is so short. I lost my uncle two days ago. He passed away, you know, but they'll go on and they'll, they'll, they'll go to other Christian TikTok lives and fight to prove that God is dead and fight to prove that he's not real, to be like a bunch of Frederick Nietzsche's and say God is dead, which we also need to pray, believers, because there has been an uprising of believers on TikTok. And I'm going to say this, I think this is awesome. I think this is good because when I first came on here and started doing Bible study, there were hardly any Christians doing this. They weren't coming on to share Jesus and his word. But I started to notice a trend. I started to notice that there were more people coming. And that there were more people that would go on and debate and talk to atheists and talk to mockers. There are more people on here um, who would come on here. Jason's one of the people who comes on here. You should check out his channel. There's another guy called uh, It's Grounded in Truth. There's a bunch of people on here. They're teaching Bible studies. They're praying. There's one gentleman on here I watch, and he sits there, and he just prays for hours for people. Prays that they'll get healed. Praise be to God. We need to tap into our gifts. We need to tap into who we are and how God created us believers. And then we need to use those things to help other people to lead them to the Lord. And also for those believers to help teach and disciple them as well. It is so important. I notice this trend that's going on. Praise God. I thank you so much. And I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome that so many people on here do that. Philippians chapter 3 verses 13 through 14 says, Not that I have already obtained all this, or that I have arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which is Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me homeward bound in Jesus Christ. Praise be the God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And the Bible is not fiction. Sparky McSparkerton. Um, that's funny, actually. Sparky McSparkerton. Uh, the Bible is um, a book written by 46 authors, 66 books mm -hmm. over thousands of years, over three continents. And while one person was writing something, another person who never met them wrote, wrote it somewhere else, and it doesn't contradict itself. Praise be to God. Check it out sometime. So I am greatly encouraged when I come on here. I take my walk every morning. I take my hour walk. And there are more and more bold believers. And they're joining the TikTok Live Army. Praise be to God. They are pressing forward towards the goal of Jesus Christ and helping bring others to that. But also leading the way and taking people with them. You know, we need to pray, believers. We will rise up. We will be bold. There are more and more restored believers on live teaching his word, praise be to God. They're debating atheists. They're praying for healing of souls. And to me, every time I see it, I have joy in my heart. It is awesome. And I hope 
more people. I hope if you are a believer on here, I hope that you pray about possibly having a live on here. That you possibly would join us in our army to be able to bring and to teach. My, my uh, gift is that I can teach the Word of God. That I am a verse-by-verse -verse Bible teacher the majority of the time. So praise be to God. That's my gift, so I like to share that with others, and it's great. And I love it. I love it when atheists come on here. I love it when non-believers come on here. I love it when the mockers come on here because they're getting seeds sown. Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, praise God. So, and this is another reason why here. It says here in Luke chapter 5, verse 10. It says, And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for men. Praise be to God. Thank you. And the Greek word there is catching men alive. So we are called to fish for men, to catch them and bring them in alive. Men, women, children, just like the ones being drugged down the broad path I talked about earlier, we need to help pull them off that broad path and bring them down the narrow one. Because there are more and more warriors overthrowing the powers of darkness, praise God, and capturing people back. Which this is what it is, praise God. Because the only other time, if you look at Luke chapter 5 verse 10, it says that we will fish for people. The Greek word there is to catch them, to capture them, the Bible says. And the only other time the word capture is used in the New Testament, the second time is in 2 Timothy chapter 2. And it says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 25, Opponents must be gently instructed in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of the truth, and that they will come to their senses and escape, and here it is, from the trap of the devil who has taken them captive to do his will. So, the two places... That it says people will get fished for men, get trapped, get captured in the net, get brought to Jesus Christ. The one time in Luke, Jesus says that you're going to fish for men and it's going to be bringing people into the kingdom, bringing people to Christ. And the only other time it says it is in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and it talks about the devil because the devil is doing the same exact thing. He's doing the same exact thing with atheists. He's doing the same thing with their mockers. He's doing it with their children as they're teaching atheism to their children and to their wives and to their their families, to their husbands. You know, we need to pull those people. We need to pray that they get out of that trap and that they come off the broad path that leads to destruction and that they come to the narrow path and follow Jesus Christ. We need to be praying for that. We need to be coming on and preaching that and teaching that to people and helping people seeing that. The two places it says people will get caught in those things. The positive here says Peter will catch men. We are called to share Jesus. We are called to bring life, to bring light, singular emphatic, to bring salt, singular emphatic. We are the salt. We are the light. So we need to be doing that. Pray, Dan Parker. We need to be praying. We need to be sharing the gospel. The Bible says in his word that as we do that, we sow seeds. We use the word. We sow seeds. And the heart starts to change. And it starts to grow like a seed inside. And eventually, salvation takes place, praise God. So Sparky McSparkerton, you think it's mumbo jumbo, but one day you will stand before God and you will understand. And the best part is mumbo, uh, Theo, blah, 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 blah. Well, what was his name again? Let me look at that because I got it. I thought it was funny. Oh, Sparky McSparkerton. The cool part about that, Sparky McSparkerton. So, uh, and thank you for coming to Bible study today. Even though you don't subscribe to Jesus and you don't subscribe to the Bible, praise be to God. I'm so happy that you're here. That's an awesome thing. So, once again, the positive of Luke chapter 5, verse 10. People will catch men, and we are called to share Jesus. We are called to share him and bring life, to bring light, to bring salt to those people. And the negative part is the devil will capture people, it says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, and he leads them to death, and he leads them to destruction. And then 
people who are so passionate about atheism, they're so passionate about Zen Buddhism and all those different religions that go all the way back. And I'm, here's the thing. Before the Tower of Babel, there was only, you follow God and you look to the Savior of the world coming, the Messiah coming. That was the beliefs. That was the religious system of the time. After the Tower of Babel, you had Tammuz mess it up and his mom Semiraris math, math mess it up. And Satan, if you can't beat him, join him. And then next thing you know, all the religions of the world come from that. So later on you hear about you hear about Tammuz and Tammuz becomes Baal and Baal becomes Ishtar and Ishtar becomes Cupid and all these different things that lead up and it says in the book of Revelation you go to the book of Revelation and you see the Antichrist riding in the spiritual realm on the Whore of Babylon and the Whore of Babylon it says John looks at it and he's shocked. The word there in the Greek, it says he's shocked when he sees it because he sees the world religions of Tammuz and the Tower of Babel that came out of that junk. And he saw that, he saw that and he was shocked that it was still there. But we are trying to pull you off that broad path and into the narrow path. And I pray that if you've never proclaimed Jesus as Lord and Savior, he's always there. He always loves you. He always cares about you, and he's always there, praise be to God. So, the same Greek meaning in the word capture, but in two different ways. They caught men alive. Peter, in his first message to the people in the book of Acts, he goes out with boldness, like we're talking about being bold today, believers. He goes out and he preaches boldness with boldness, and 3,000 people, 3,000 men, Alive, come alive in the book of Acts, praise be to God. And they never included the women and children in those. They usually counted by the men. So there were men and children there who got saved as well, praise God. If we were living a life because you said, you know, and guess what? We can change the world, just like Peter. Just like Peter. And he needed that filling of the Holy Spirit. And that's another thing, believers, is that if you look at Peter before he had the filling of the Holy Spirit, he was denying Jesus. And, you know, I love Peter because he's a ready fire aim guy. He's just like me. I'm a ready fire aim guy myself. And Jesus had to tell him all the time, three times. He was a three-time guy. You know, you're going to deny me, Peter. No, no, no. You're going to deny me, Peter. When the cock crows, you're going to deny me. Three times, he was told. Then, oh, no, I can't eat that, Lord. It's unclean. Oh, Lord, I can't. Three times. Peter, do you love me? Once. Peter, do you love me? Twice. Peter, do you love me? Three times. He's a three-time guy. I'm a more than three-time guy sometimes. But when he got filled with the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts, he goes out, he preaches a bold message. He unlocks the door he was hiding behind. He comes out, he's bold as a lion. And then when they capture him, he's in the, he's in the jail cell and he's sleeping because of the fact that he knows that he's not going to die yet. Because the Lord told him he's going to die later on, so he's in there sleeping, and the Lord comes and he saves him. Praise be to God. If we are willing to live a life of because you said so, which this is the thing about Peter in the book of Luke. Jesus comes to him and says, can I use your boat? And he says, sure, you can use my boat. So he goes out and he teaches. He gives his resources. We talked about kingdom resources a little earlier. Peter provides his kingdom resources. He provides his boat. And he goes out. And then Peter, he was fishing all night. And then Jesus says, Okay, now I want you to go out into the deep in a time when it's not. It doesn't make sense about fishing. And I want you to cast your nets out. And he goes out. And the Bible says that there's so many fish that he has to call other friends and other people to come and gather all the fish. So not only is God blessing Peter, but he's blessing all the people around him as well, praise be to God. That's the type of Christians we should have. We should have that kingdom boldness. And when we have that kingdom cash, those kingdom finances, we can bless others with it, praise be to God. So thank you so much, Jesus, for that. So God gives us the provisions because the devil does the same thing. He catches men and women and children alive. The Bible says um, that he is, there are two words for evil in the Bible. 
The first one is called kakos. Uh, the Greek word kakos is that if you're that you're a miserable person, you're miserable all the time, and your goal is to drag people into misery with you. You know, and I've seen people like that. They just every everybody that's around them, they want to drag them and make them miserable. That's what they do. The second one is called uh, is it's called poneos, porneos, and it's. The word porneos is dragging everybody around you into destruction. The word porneos. So, and it's referred to, when they use the word porneos, it's referred to the devil. His name is evil one, porneos. It says he drags people to destruction. It's where we get that word pornography from. Which that means if you're involved in that, maybe we should pray and get you out of that because of the fact that it will drag you to destruction. Let me read this verse again to you that is our main verse today. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 through 14. It says here, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. The devil's on that road. All, all the mixed religions and everything else on that road and it says that many enter through it and the word many we talked about it earlier the majority enter through it but small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life and only a few find it believers we must rise up we must take back what is ours we fight and we battle and take it back through prayer and then we surrender. This is the only time in life and I, this was the hardest thing for me to get when I first got saved. You know, because I was good at fighting. Man, I was a good fighter before I got saved and I was good at battling and I was good at making people surrender and I was good at making people give up and, you know, I was a bouncer at one point in my life. And um, then I learned when I got saved that I couldn't, that, that the way that you fight, the way that you fight is not by, you know, going and fighting in your own power. That's what the Lord, the Lord has taught us that. If you look at the book of Joshua, every single battle that's won in the book of Joshua is when they surrender to Jesus, is when they worship the Lord. You know, Jericho is a perfect example of that, which we talked about the Israelites in the wilderness earlier, and Egypt had gone up and destroyed all the land looking for the Israelites, and then when they came down and the whole land was destroyed, the Israelites come in. And praise be to God, the Lord told them, you can go in now because the land's pretty much yours for the taking now. And the first place that they go is Jericho, and they're splitting, God's splitting the Jordan River, and the, Jor the people in Jericho are looking in the, behind those big, huge walls, and they're scared to death because of the fact the world power at the time had just kicked their butts, the Egyptians. And after that now, they've got the Israelites that are coming to get them. You know, praise be to God. So, you know, we fight, we battle. But how did they battle? The Bible says. It says that when they got to those big, huge walls that you could have chariot races on, it says in the Bible that they walked around the walls and they praised God. Seven days walked around the walls, praise God. Six days. Seventh day, God says, seven times walk around the wall and praise God. Seven times they walked around. And the Bible says that, boom, the walls fell. And I love uh, secular scholars will say, oh, well, it's because they wore down the, the dirt around the walls by walking around it so much. But, you know, I used to, I love to take walks and I, I walk a lot. And I used to walk around my church for an hour and pray when I was leading the church. I'm an associate pastor now in Shreveport, Louisiana now. But um, before that, I was leading a church in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I'd walk around my church and I would pray. And you think all those times and I walked around, you think the church would have fell down. It didn't fall down. So we need to pray, believers. We need to praise, believers. We need to be praising. We need to surrender when the battles come about. And when the battles come, we don't need to take them and do them in our own power first and at the last minute be like, oh, Jesus, help me. No, we need to, right when we go into the battle, we need to worship. 
We need to surrender. We need to pray. Like I'm praying for all the people in here right now. Lord, I pray for all the people on here. Father, that don't know you, that they, you would, they would proclaim you as Lord and Savior. Father, I praise you that you can do that. So the last thing anyone does in this world is surrender. But we are called to surrender, and the battle belongs to the Lion of Judah. Because for all the people who are talking, I saw people talking about Biden and Trump earlier on here. Jesus is bigger than the political realm. He's bigger than the political realm. Jesus is larger than the satanic influencers on here. Jesus is more intelligent than the atheistic mind. And Jesus is bolder than than a mocker's mockery. Jesus, the lion, has roared. He is roaring on the hearts of believers, and we are bold enough to be here. And I pray for all these people all the time. I pray for Jason and all the people on here who are teaching and doing stuff. You know, I pray that they have the heart of a lion when they're on here. I pray I'll be watching their programs and I say, Lord, Holy Spirit, guide them. Give them the correct answers. Help them, Lord, to lead people to take them and be fishers of men and be fishers of women. You know, he is roaring on the hearts of believers and we are bold enough to be here teaching his word. Praying and sharing his love. Romans chapter 1, verses 15 through 17. It says this, And if the book was banned, Snowfall 83, then I would still have one, and I'd still be reading it today, praise God. So that's why I am so eager to preach the gospel. Also to you who are in Rome, this is Paul, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. This is the theme of the whole book of Romans. Romans chapter 1, verses 16 through 17, which is actually taken from the Old Testament, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. See, the enemy is puffed up, his desires are not upright, but the righteous person will live by his faithfulness. This verse in Habakkuk is quoted in Romans, is quoted in Galatians, and it's also quoted in Hebrews. And if you read the epistles, I want you to note something here. There's a little tip for you Christians out there. Um, if you look at this, Romans is the just. Galatians is shall live. Hebrews is by faith. The just shall live by faith. Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. So, same with Paul, Peter, and John and how they wrote. If you look at Paul, Peter, and John and how they wrote, it says with Paul, if you look, it says, you know, faith. He talked about faith mostly. Then you look at Peter. Peter talked about hope mostly. And if you talk about John the Apostle, his main theme was love. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Thank you, Jesus. So the three things that we need to have are from these verses. I am obligated. I am eager. Christians, are you eager? Are you obligated? And the third one, which is the most important, I am unashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So Paul says in verse 16, it is the gospel. It is the power of God. It is the purpose of salvation. And the means is, if you believe, and the scope is to everyone on here. It's to Philip. It's to Sparky McSparkler. It's to Israelite. It's to, let's see here, Snowfall. It's to um, all these different people. Wayne Fullwood. It's to all these different people. F.C. Dobbs. You know, the gospel is available to each and every one of you. Praise be to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It is the theme of Romans is the good news of Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. I am not ashamed. And the language there, if you want to look at it in the Greek, it says, I am proud of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you proud, believer, of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Are you in your work? Are you in your school? 
are you in your life? Are you proud of the gospel, believers? Because it is the gospel which is the power of God to salvation. Praise be to Jesus. I love sharing these verses. I love seeing people get saved. And if you got saved, if there's anyone on here that I've since I've been teaching, if you if you ever get saved or if you ever want to, um, you know, know more about Jesus Christ, you know, just uh, let me know. I'd be I'd be like praise, you know, praise um, praise be to God. Rise, uh, Ro, Rob Dumond. We need to rise as believers. We get too lazy. We get too complacent. We get too lukewarm. We need to be praying. We need to be seeking after the Lord because Satan has got the run on things in this world. I mean, geez, Minnesota, they recently just had this museum, this satanic museum, or this museum, and they're summoning demons at the museum. And not only do they invite the parents, they invite the kids. And they have even like a little thing. If you text, if you text summoning, you can talk to the demon. That's how bold the world is getting. And we as Christians need to be bolder than that. We need to be the one rising, praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am proud to be a Christian. I am proud to be a believer. I love sharing these verses. I love seeing people get saved. The Holy Spirit moving through this time to share scripture, and then something clicks in the person as you're sharing it with them. The beauty of a one-on-one -on -one experience with an unsaved person who becomes saved right in front of us is an awesome experience. And then in verse 17 of Romans chapter 1, it says, For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith, from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. It's revealed from faith to faith. Not faith to works. Not faith to, oh, I'm a good person. It is faith to faith. A lot of Christians attempt to tame the flesh, and it's like a roaring lion ready to devour you in sin. The only way to tame the flesh in this world, the Bible says, is we need to crucify it. We need to kill it spiritually. We need to move forward in faith to faith. Paul brought us to the realization that without salvation, each person is condemned. We talked about that earlier. They're heading to the broad path of destruction, and they're doing everything in their power to drag people with them because they're deceived by the devil. We, for example, if we were in a court situation where we see God's holiness, and we would understand if we compare ourselves to a holy God, we are nothing, and we are doomed to hell. So... The Bible says, you know, and I'm thinking like I'm looking here right now. Uh, Cody, seek, uh, Cody Scarcy, you know, I'm probably thinking you're a good person. Steve, I'm probably thinking you're a good person. FC Dobbs, you're probably a good person. Mike, I'm thinking you're probably a good person by my standards. Steve, you're probably a good person. Rob Dumond, you're probably a good person. You probably give the charity and you probably do nice things. And Israelite86, you're probably a good person. And, you know, all these people on here, you're probably good people by my standards. But compared to a holy God, that's a whole different ball game. Compared to a holy God, we don't compare. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3, verse 10 says, there is no one good. No, not one. But the cool part was, is that Jesus knew that. God knew that. And it says that God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us, that we may become the righteousness of God. So we talked about Genesis chapter 22 last week, how we touched the Father's heart and could see the Father's heart and His love for us by sending His Son, Jesus Christ. And God sent His Son to Calvary to die for us so that we, through Him, can have a place in heaven. He defeated sin. He defeated death. He defeated the grave. He took the wrath and the cup of God upon himself. He drank it and he defeated it so that we could go to heaven if we proclaim him as Lord and Savior. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse 9, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 
And if you think that the heart is just an organ and that you don't use your heart, which people were telling me for months on here, which I did a little atheism thing. You can check it out on my YouTube page. But here's the thing I say. If you don't want to use your heart, then I bet your marriage is going really well. Your relationships are going real well if you don't use your heart because the heart is there. And we need to proclaim with our mouths that he is Lord. And we need to believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead and that we can be saved. So thank you. Yes, thank you, Wayne Fulward. I praise you. Uh, thank you so much for coming on here today. Praise Jesus for that. You know, awesome. That's an awesome thing. Praise be to God. I appreciate that. So um, warriors and uh, Wayne, rise up, man. Be praying. Be seeking after the truth. Continue to read your word. Continue to pray. And uh, continue to pray. Thank you for praying for all the people on here. You know, it's all about souls. It's all about bringing people into the kingdom. Praise be to God. So bringing them, and we are fishers of men. We are fishers of women. You know, we are capturing them and bringing them into the kingdom. Praise be to God. And the devil wants to do the same thing. And you don't like it when we take them away from them. So, but warriors, we need to rise up. We in need to stay in Jesus. We need to keep doing what we're doing. Whether we have an audience of a thousand, I don't know how many people are on here today. I may have a thousand people on here. I don't know. I may have one person on here, but whether we have a thousand or whether we have one, continue to be on here, TikTok people. Continue to be on live, influencing the power of the Lion of Judah. The lion who roars in our lungs and in our hearts. The God who rules over our lives. The one who can save anyone. No matter what messes they dug themselves into, he can pull people out of the dark, broad path to destruction. He can bring them and put them on the path, the narrow road to life, to where they need to be. Walking the narrow road to faith and love in Jesus Christ. So, praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are good, Jesus. So, rise up, believers. You know, if you never accepted Jesus Christ, you can proclaim him as Lord today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord, for each and every person who came on the live today, Father. I pray for those um, who are on here that are believers. I ask, Father, that you would grant them boldness. I pray for people like Jason, people like uh, Grounded in Battle, um, all the people, Lord, who are doing Bible studies, people who are influencers on here, Lord. I pray, Father, that you would use them to bring people into the kingdom. Use them to save souls. Use them to sow seeds so that people can come on. Lord, I pray you grant them boldness. Lord, for anyone on here, Lord, that you might use in the future, Father, on this platform, I pray, Father, that you would help them, Lord, to be bold, to be on here, Lord, to teach, to use their gifts, just maybe they're called to pray, Father, whatever it is, maybe they're prophesying or whatever it is, Lord, I pray, Father, that you would give them the boldness and the understanding of their gifts so that they're able to do that in Jesus' name. And, Father, for those, Lord, who don't know you, on here, Father. I pray, Lord, again, that you would stir their hearts. I see people on here who were on here last week and the week before. Father, I pray that you continue to sow seeds in their lives. Continue to lead them, Lord, to the narrow path. Take them off the broad path of destruction. And I thank you for that. And most importantly, and thank you, Lord, for helping us. Give us boldness through your Holy Spirit. Fill people with your Holy Spirit. Grant them to be bold, Father, use them to be the salt and the light of this world, the emphatic salt and light in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you for that. I give you all the praise and I give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So, praise be to God. So, I just want to thank people for coming on today. Let me go through the comments, see if there's anything. My life is instantly better than it was when I was a believer. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry to hear that, Shane. Um, innovative Concept Solutions. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for all the scriptures you're giving me. Uh, I see a bunch of scriptures on here. Um, I don't care now. Uh, you're going to care one day when you stand before God. You know, thank you again, Wayne, for all the wonderful, positive um, comments and all the great things that you shared. 
So I'd like to think I'm a good person, if that's what we're talking about. Well, Mike, I, I would love to think that you're a good person by, by my standards, but by Jesus' standards, we need a Savior, we need a Lord to save us. Uh, Cody Scursi, thank you for coming on. Steve, FC Dobbs, uh, thank you all. You know, didn't Jesus say to worship and pray in private? Um, you know, he said that, but also when we're, when we're teaching, we need to be praying with others. We're also called to disciple people and pray with people and pray for people. And, uh, sometimes it's good to be praying in, in a group of people, though, um, he said most of the time, um, the, the reason why he said, didn't Jesus, um, didn't tell us to pray in private. The reason why he said that, if you look at it in the context was because there were Pharisees at the time. And uh, they had these big phylacteries and these big, like, these robes. And they had bells on their robes. And what they would do is, um, for example, when they would give to the poor, they would walk up to the to the poor and they'd ring these bells and they'd say, Look at me! Look at me! I'm about to give an offering! And and do that. But the thing, the thing about it was, it was a matter of the heart. It wasn't a matter of the fact that... They, um, it wasn't a fact that Jesus was saying, pray in your closet. Yes, we need to do that. I have a prayer closet. I have a pray place I go and I pray for all of you. So, you know, Mark, I pray for you that you're an, you know, even though you're an atheist and you believe that this is a fairy tale, Steve, I pray for you. You know, I pray for all of you on here. Praise be to God. Um, but, um, when we're teaching and stuff, we can pray in front of people. You know, there's, that's like legalism and religiosity. It's the same type of religiosity is when last week when somebody told me that the Bible said that I can't pray because I wear my cowboy hat, you know, and that God's not hearing my prayers, which is downright silly. You know, I told them, I said, you know what you need to do? You need to start greeting each other, greeting everybody with a holy kiss because the Bible says that too. So, but, you know, that's the thing. So, but I'm not playing with God's holy name, Armando or Armado. So, Lord, I pray for our motto, Lord, and ask, Father, that you would um, help them, Lord Jesus, to understand that what I'm trying to do is disciple people. Father, I thank you for that. I give you praise for that. Continue to uh, work in our motto's life each and every day. I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly or her name correctly, Lord. So, And I give you praise for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you, everyone, for, um, for tuning in. So... Okay, it says here, did Jesus exist in the book of Joshua? Read John chapter 1, 1 John chapter 1. Jesus always existed. So he was always there. So praise be to God. Um, Jesus died for everyone, homeschool historian. Uh, yes, ooga booga, now it's corn. That's just, that's just uh, nonsense, but that's okay. Just like some of the stuff, theism, mystical extortion. All right, yeah, all right. Well, thank you so much. I see a lot of, you had a lot of good comments on here. Praise be to God. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, give praise to God for that. Hope you all have a beautiful week. I love teaching Bible study on here. I look forward to seeing you all next week. God bless you and have a great rest of your week. And uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord.